Elizabeth, Ed Rainey, who's going to be talking about Sicily. Then we're going to have our break, summer break from June, July, and August. Then when we get back in September, we're going to have a kickoff of Travel 101 and talk about all the different changes that are going on in the travel industry today and, and where we are as we you know move through the rest of the year. So that'll be a, a really cool uh, topic going on the ADA and uh, packing tips, trip insurance, uh, you know, all the guidelines that are going on with the CDC and all of that. So we'll get that done. Then we're going to have a rescheduled interactive member appreciation experience. This is going to be a really cool experience where we're going to get feedback on things that you all want to, to hear about. And then in November, we've got Eric Schweitzer talking about Patagonia and Antarctica. And then we've got a lighthouse, Sentinels of the Sea for December. So that'd be really awesome. And now uh, Noah and Mary Helen Rose's team will present highlights of their November 2021 cruise of Greece. Their trip began with four days in Athens prior to boarding the Viking Venus for an ocean cruise to seven additional ports, including Ephesus. Uh, they also visited Greek, Roman, Minoan, and Mycenaean ruins. Without further ado, here are Noah and Mary Helen. If I don't use the mic, can you hear me in the back? No. no. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, how many people have been to Greece already? Wow, quite a few. Uh, how many want to go to Greece? Whether you've been and want to go a second time, great. Okay. Well, this afternoon, we'd like to take you on a Greek odyssey. Um, we went to Greece in November of uh, 2020, um, 2021. I'm trying to think what year we're in. Um, Okay, this, uh, we went to Greece uh, four days early to spend some time in Athens on our own before we got on a Viking cruise ship. Uh, when we were leaving New York City, we had a gorgeous sunset, just fabulous. Okay, day one, we arrive in Athens, the Greek flag. And I think it's always good to know a few facts about the country you're going to before you get there. So Greece has had a lot of history, a lot of different um, civilizations and a lot of different, uh, it's been occupied by many different groups over the years. Uh, Greece is about the size of Alabama, just so you have a sense of size. It's four fifths mountainous terrain and one fifth islands. The capital is Athens, which was named after Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war. Uh, Greece is a parliamentary republic. The main religion is Greek Orthodox. And you want to bring euros if you're going to Greece because that's the currency at the present time. As we all know, the Olympics were started in Greece and they had uh, two other uh, Olympics besides the original Olympics. And of course, the language is Greek. <laughs> and the temperature in November, we had some warm, sunny days and we had some cooler, overcast days. Okay, to start out. <clears throat> Get my pointer here. This is our hotel. We booked this on our own before we went there. And you'll see what it's called in a minute. And then here's the Acropolis. We did not get to the Acropolis on our first trip to Greece. Uh, so we were excited to have four days to uh, visit the Acropolis on this visit. Okay. <laughs> location, 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 as they say in real estate. The hotel called the Acropolis View, and boy, what a view. This was the view from our balcony when we got there. Go ahead. And then there's Noah, the happy traveler in our little boutique hotel. Wearing my shirt. Travelers, wearing his uh, Greek shirt, which he bought, of course, as soon as he got there. Uh, streets near our hotel were made out of marble, which is interesting. And of course, you wouldn't want to walk on these streets when you just had a fresh rain. You'd be slipping and sliding. Uh, there were many feral cats. You want to mention the cats? Yeah, they support the cat population to keep the rats out. They learned from England when they got rid of the cats, they had the Great Plague. So the Greeks actually go out and feed them. Uh, they neuter them as many as they can. But it, when we traveled the country, there were cats everywhere and people really respected them. They don't have mice, rats, some of the pigeons, you know, cats. <laughs> we like cats, so we were okay with all the cats. Uh, we saw these two tortoises, 
uh, as we were walking one day to the Acropolis. Here's the evening view of the Acropolis. So we were blessed. We had morning views, afternoon views, evening views uh, when we were at the hotel of the Acropolis. There's another view, evening view of the uh, Oyan, which is the theater I'll talk about more in a minute. Um, on the first full day in Athens, we booked with our friends a one day trip to Delphi. That's the parliamentary building in Athens. These are um, apartment buildings with the awnings and then some people have uh, vegetation on their uh, balcony or up on their roofs. So we saw a lot of those as we went through the city. We said Greece is very mountainous. So uh, there's a lot of climbing up. As Noah likes to say, sometimes it's both ways uh, up, <laughs> going up and, and coming down, it's still up. There's a road sign in both English and Greek. I was fascinated with the Greek letters. Uh, again, just an example, it's so mountainous, the houses are built up on these steep hillsides. And now we're arriving at Delphi. And um, here's our sign, of course. And then here are some of the ruins and then the theater. And we'll get closer in a couple of slides. Okay, and again, the, the uh, columns that exist from one of the temples and the, um, the uh, theater. We're at Birder, so you're gonna see a few bird pictures. Uh, I haven't looked up this one yet. My uh, international bird book is up in New York State right now, so. I'll have to look that bird up later this year. Okay, here's a very interesting stone. This conical stone. Delphi was called the navel of the world or of the earth because it was halfway between north and south and east and west. It had a very central location. Okay. Uh, they had a number of small buildings that were called treasuries where people from different parts of Greece would come and store um, things that they were going to um, offer at the rites. Uh, now we're coming up the hill. Oh, go back. The group is coming up the hill here. This is a temple to Apollo, the sun god. This is, or our columns, uh, from the area that was called the Agora. And Agora in Greece is a marketplace or a place where there can be public assemblies. This, of course, is one of the theaters. You'll see more theaters in our presentation. And then this is the, or are the ruins of the temple where people would go to hear the oracle. And the oracle was given by a young priestess who was a virgin. She would um, drink water from a, a spring chew on laurel leaves and breathe vapors from a crack in the earth. And if you know anything about volcanoes and what kind of gases are coming out of cracks in the earth, that probably wasn't the healthiest thing to be doing. <laughs> then she would fall into a trance, which is probably why uh, she was breathing the, uh, the uh, vapors to do that. She would utter incoherent words, which were then interpreted by priests who would then tell you in verse what she said, and it was ambiguous, so you had to figure out the answer. Okay, so it was a fun thing to go to the Oracle. And they also have a lovely little museum there at Delphi, um, right by the ruins of the temples. Um, and then these are just some examples of some of the statues. These were a, of a more archaic period type of statuary. Um, nice looking men. Uh, this is the bronze charioteer, a very famous um, bronze statue. The original one had, of course, the chariot and the four horses, but this is all that's left. But the detail on this bronze statue, um, just fabulous. You can see the draping on the, uh, the clothing there, and then on the head, the hair, and um, the eyes and the face. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, uh, so we drive back at night after this full day trip and you can see Athens has a lot of traffic in commuting hour just like many cities. Okay, the next day we're going to explore the Acropolis. Here we are at our hotel with our friend Steve and um, our nice breakfast. And this hotel, because of COVID, 
you had to go on uh, the website and order your breakfast, but they had great selections, both Greek food and American food, and then they would serve you in trays. You could have it in your room. Why would you do it in your room? When you could go up and sit on the beautiful roof terrace and see the Acropolis. Now you notice the Acropolis in this picture, looking a little hazy, not as clear as some other pictures we have. That's because it was dust storms from Africa blowing over into uh, Athens, which was interesting. That's a little clearer picture again from our hotel top. Uh, for those who are mobility impaired or challenged, there is an elevator that will take you up to the top of the Acropolis. For those of us who still like to climb stairs, uh, you can climb up the stairs and then you see here some people coming down. You have to come up and down through the sentence. And this is a little sort of corridor once you climb up the stairs to go into the Acropolis. Okay, this is a temple with a porch of the maidens. And a little closer, and those are the Kheriadas, Kheriadas, something like that. Um, very famous. The originals are in the archaeological museum um, near the Acropolis. That's a close up of one of the heads of the uh, maidens. Okay, a view of the Parthenon. You can see there's a lot of rubble here. Um, this is a nice view, standing a little away from the Parthenon. Uh, the Parthenon was a temple to um, Athena, Athena Parenthos, that's where Parthenon comes from. And that means Athena the Virgin. And as I said, she was the goddess of wisdom and war. And the Parthenon has Doric columns. Anybody who's into architecture, the Doric columns, there's three types of columns, the Doric, the Ionic, and the Corinthian. And the Doric are the most uh, simple, by simple, I don't mean <laughs> simple-minded type, but the, you know, the uh, most simple in terms of architecture. That's so I need. <laughs> oh, and um, can you go back to the other, the previous one? This is the frieze, which has sculptures in it. And then, okay, go to the next one. This is the pediment, which also has these sculptures in it. And has anybody been to the British Museum? Yeah. And have you seen the Elgin marbles? That's what well, the came. British took a lot of the um, sculptures from the pediments over to England. So if you want to see the rest of the Parthenon, you have to make a trip to the British Museum. <laughs> And I only know that because we went to England many years ago and went to the British Museum yeah, before I ever went to the Parthenon. Okay, this is just another view from the top of the Parthenon. Oh, Acropolis means a citadel up on a hill, and the Parthenon in Athens is, of course, on the highest point of the Acropolis Hill. Now, this is the Odeon of Herodes Atticus, and it was a a theater built for musical performances. Now the seats look pretty good, don't they, for an ancient room? Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, the um, theater was renovated in 1950 and they hold concerts here. And I think they said Elton John was one of the performers one year um, at this theater. And the walls are really um, beautiful. And of course, we saw those also from the other side at night in, in David and from our hotel. Okay, <clears throat> that's another view of that view. Then we're exiting um, the Parthenon, going down the steps. And this is another little temple up on top. And then this is called the uh, Theater of Dionysus, which we could see from up on top of the Parthenon. Okay, Theater of Dionysus, who was a god, a god of wine. Um, and here are the seats. Go ahead. And some of them had backs. I had never been or seen pictures of, when I've seen pictures of uh, ancient theaters to see seats with backs. So I thought, thought that was pretty interesting. And even more interesting, go to the next, is you can't see it too good on the slide, but their names carved in, uh, in Greek letters, of course. So the rich people had reserved seats, okay? <laughs> Another kitty, you like our kitties. And souvenirs. 
how can you not buy a couple of souvenirs when you're abroad, okay? So, <laughs> one of the first things he bought was a shirt. It's all great to me. Oh, you and then I think it's a good idea when you go to a foreign country to learn a few words, such as please, thank you, hello, whatever. So, we have a good morning. Don't say calamari. They'll think you're asking for something to eat, okay? So it's Calamara. And Tony will correct me because he's brief. Uh, Calamara for a uh, good evening. Um, we've got yes and no. Uh, thank you. Fcaristo. Okay, just want to make sure it's correct. And Paracalo para for please. Um, and then there's some other words, but we, we basically said, please, thank you, good morning, good evening, that kind of thing. And the Greeks appreciated it. You would see people smiling when you said a word or two in their language, even though you're not having a whole conversation. I got a lot of smiles when I would say those words. Okay, um, the Greek eye, the evil eye. Okay, so the evil eye is on everything where they're in Greece. It's on towels, it's on shirts, it's on jewelry, it's on my bag. Um, these are out of glass, this is a refrigerator magnet. And the evil eye um, guards against misfortune. It brings good luck and protects you from any ill will that could otherwise have a negative effect on you. So a lot of Greeks, have, they have bracelets, they have all sorts of things with the evil eye. So how can you not buy something with the evil eye when you go to Greece, right? Okay, now we're at the um, archeological museum, which again was just down the street from our hotel. And these are some things we saw, we don't have a lot. Oh, there I am with my uh, bag that I brought today, with my evil eyes all over it. Okay, and uh, some reliefs. And there's the originals of the uh, names that were on the uh, building, but they removed them and put replacements. And just, oh, Athena, goddess of wisdom, she would go around with an owl on her shoulder, according to myth. That's why the owl was important. And just examples of some of the sculptures. I mean, there were a ton of sculptures in this museum. Is everybody hearing me okay? Okay. Um, pottery, fascinating pottery for the ladies. Gold jewelry, any jewelry. I'm a jewelry person, so I was uh, admired seeing uh, ancient uh, jewelry, how it was made. These, again, pottery with the uh, handle. These were terracotta boots. I have no idea what they were used for, but that was pretty interesting. That is a child's commode. Everybody knows what a commode is. That's what it is. And then back out on the street, a uh, food vendor. And then um, I didn't realize, because you know when you see pictures of Greece, you see the Parthenon, but they don't tell you what's all around the bottom of the Parthenon. So here's a, another building, which is a museum. And you can see from here, it's a huge, huge uh, portico and hallway. Um, there's Noah comparing his beard with the uh, sculpture. <laughs> and then this is a temple of Ephitus, Ephitus, three people Ephesus. have Ephesus, uh, that we could see from the second floor of the other museum we were in. So it looked pretty fascinating. So we walked over to get a closer look and pretty well preserved temple actually, because a lot of temples, you just have the columns. This one had the roof and a lot more to it. And then um, we go to another area with these columns of the Temple of Apollo. That one didn't do so well. And um, can you all guess what this is? That's the rest area when you're out there in the ancient agora doing your shopping in the channel for, and then birders, magpie, exactly, magpie. Looks a kind of a lot like our magpie in uh, our country. Okay, a lot of street cafes. Uh, we had these street musicians walking down the street, playing and collecting money, that was cool. And then this is, um, like Abedus like Hill in the haze in the evening. Again, that dust from Africa. Okay, then we're going off to Cape Sunyan. And we're taking Viking cruise. 
And uh, as Ed said already, there were a lot of um, protocol for keeping the safety. We were tested every single day. People had to wear masks, they had to hand wash your hands before you went into the dining room. Uh, people on the buses were masked, the guides were masked for our excursions. It was very well done and nobody got sick. We didn't get sick, we, we felt fortunate. Okay, the bike for Venus is the ship we were on. And here's a map of where we went. So we started in Athens, we go up to Volos, Thessaloniki, Ephesus, Kusadasi, Turkey, Rhodes, Santorini, Crete, and Ethiopia. So that's just a quick map of our group. They're the happy travelers on the ship. And just looking around the ship. And later on, if you have questions about the Viking cruise, we have the answer. Them. It was our first Viking cruise, and it was great. Okay, again, we're uh, driving through the city to go to Cape Sunyan. And there's Cape Sunyan from the road, the pillars of the temple up on the hill. It was quite dramatic. And we're getting closer. Of course, it's the temple of Poseidon, the god of the sea. And there we are to prove we were there. And the view is just spectacular, even though it was somewhat overcast, wonderful view. Coming back through the city, there's a pharmacy. And we left the um, port at night. So uh, there's our pilot boat. <coughs> and Noah caught a picture of a porpoise, which isn't always easy to do because they're pretty fast jumping through the water. Okay, our next stop is Volos. And at Volos, um, fortunately, it was very overcast and it was cold, but this is kind of pretty, this little circle where the red flowers give us a little color on a cloudy day. Uh, Volos, we were going up to a mountain village and believe me, it was way up. Uh, again, houses built up along the cliffs. You can see they're made out of stones and quite attractive. And then up on the top, these roofs are little pieces of slate and they form a nice pattern if you like art stuff. It was kind of artistic, the, the pattern. <laughs> and this is funny. Pretty much all Greek to us, except for this sign up here. They do at various places have signs in English and Greek. Little Byzantine type uh, church or chapel. And there's the inside. Very, a lot of stones, you're in the mountains, a lot of stone work on this little street. Decided to go up this street here and take a look at the houses up here. And what goes up must come down. And then back to the ship. Okay, next is Thessaloniki. And there's the sign of Thessaloniki. Again, we're doing a day trip here. Now, Viking has some included tours, which are usually of the city or town you're in, but as many companies do, they also have the excursions where you can go off and see other things, which of course you pay extra for, as you probably know. Okay, so we're going to the tombs of Virginia. There's our sign up there. We're walking down the street to go to the tomb, and uh, of course we took a bus to this area, so we just thought it was interesting you could get fresh pomegranate juice. Uh, fortunately, they have a lot of um, the, the, um, the cafe or uh, little restaurant signs in English, so you don't starve. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the entrance to the tomb of Philip II of Macedonia. If you know your Greek history, Philip unified the Greek city states under his rule, thus setting the stage for his famous son, Alexander the Great. And his tomb is the most important one that are in this uh, site of the burial tombs. Okay, this is a gravestone inside. They have a museum as part of the um, tomb, uh, some pottery. And of course, this is where we are, Philip's tomb. This is some people standing in front of the tomb. This is a door with no people. They did not open the door because the door would crumble. So they came into the tomb either from the top or the side. This is Philip's armor, his gold embossed shield. This was great. This is a wonderful place if you like gold stuff. Uh, the gold boxes, um, 
is where they put the bones of the people after they burned the body. And then above it is a gold crown. And there were probably, I don't know, five or six beautiful gold crowns, a different view of the box. And then on the front of the box, you can see Mother of Pearl in this design here. I mean, the workmanship on these crowns and gold, and this is back in um, like 359, 336 BC. I mean, it just blows your mind. Uh, there's a close-up of a, a crown, and they were hard to get pictures of because they're all under glass. They're not going to have them out. The public, public can touch them or take them. Um, some, some great silver pots and uh, utensils. Uh, that one had a ram's head on the pan. This one has a head in the bowl. Um, and then this is the outside of the mound of the tomb. And Thessaloniki, um, was founded by King Cassander of Macedonia, and it's had a variety of um, people occupied, including the Ottoman Turks. And the White Tower was a notorious prison and scene of mass executions during the period of the Ottoman rule. Well, when the Greeks finally conquered the city in 1912, they um, whitewashed and remodeled, they whitewashed the exterior, which is why it's called the White Tower now, and remodeled it inside. And this is a uh, statue of Alexander Great, which we passed on our way to the Archaeological Museum. And this museum has lots of gold. And so um, they talk about how the gold was mined, how it was worked. And then we have quite a few gold artifacts. Again, another beautiful crown. I'm a jewelry person, I can't help myself. <laughs> more jewelry, more jewelry. Another different kind of crown. Uh, the lower piece here is a lozenge, which they put over the mouths of dead people so the spirit would not escape the body. <laughs> Some gold pins and necklace. And these are famous, the gold masks. My one regret when we went to Greece, we didn't get to the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, which has apparently a bunch of these gold masks from the, um, the uh, ruins at Mycenae. The church of St. Demetrius, and he was the patron saint of Thessaloniki. And again, <laughs> more gold on the inside of the church. Okay. <laughs> Scenic cruising past Mount Athos. What is Mount Athos? It is a monastic community of Eastern Orthodox monks, 2,000, approximately 2,000, living there in 20 different monasteries. See the cross here. And again, in very steep terrain. You can see the different buildings. And then this one is way, way up in this little crevice. I don't even know how they could build that. And no women are allowed and not even any female animals. So only men can go to Mount Athos. Ladies, if you wanna go, you can. And most people go as pilgrims and not as um, visitors. So if your husband wants, a little vacation. You can go to Mount Athos as a pilgrim, <laughs> spend some time. Uh, this is a sunset from our uh, <laughs> our dining room that evening. Kusadasi, Turkey. There it is, Kusadasi. Nice big sign. <laughs> so when you get into port, you know where you are. Uh, there was another uh, Venus, uh, our Viking ship, Venus. Not the Venus, the uh, Viking C. Sea, I'm sorry. So I said to Nella, when we go back to the ship tonight, we better be sure we're hitting on the right vessel. We might end up someplace we had booked on our itinerary. The Turkish flag, uh, Turkish uh, dancers were there uh, having a performance when our ship came in. Very nice, had very colorful costumes. And now we're off to Ephesus. Ephesus is an ancient port city um, that was once the most important Greek city and trading center in the Mediterranean. In fact, Greece in the old days 
was over on that part of the um, Asia Minor. Um, both they, they, that part of the world was still Greek at the time. Um, Ephesus throughout history has survived multiple attacks and changed hands many times between conquerors. And so there's not only the Greek presence in Ephesus, um, there's a lot of Roman uh, ruins in Ephesus because they took over. So this is the, go back one slide. This is the Temple of Hadrian. And we're gonna show you close-ups of this figure and this figure. So there's this one. Again, the original is in a museum. This is a replica. Uh, and then this is a head that looks kind of like the head of a Medusa. If you get a close-up, it looks snaky. And this is Nike, or so Greeks would say Nike, the goddess of victory. I was told that when we were at the park, and I was sneaky, not Nike. This is the Cadulus, the, the staff of Hermes, and it's two snakes uh, intertwined on his staff. And of course, that Caduceus is used as a um, symbol of um, a lot of our medical establishment. Again, just some of the things you might see as you walk down the main street. Keep walking. And again, we have the restrooms when we need them in the ancient days. Very thoughtful. Probably more restrooms than we have sometimes in places we walk around in our own country when you're sightseeing. Okay, we're going down uh, the main thoroughfare to end up at the library of um, Celsus. And there's the famous library of Celsus which was a tomb for the governor, the Roman governor of the uh, province of Asia, but it also <laughs> was serving as a library with about 12,000 scrolls. It was the third largest library in the ancient world. Beautiful, beautiful uh, ruin. Ephesus is very famous for this particular room. <clears throat> and there's statues in the niches and there's a close up of one of the statues. And then it was a harbor town. So you're walking down, I believe that's Harbor Street. Now, the sea isn't close to the shoreline of Ephesus anymore. You know, over time, things silt in. So uh, it's not right on the uh, shore of the sea anymore. And again, a long walk. Some of it was uh, board, boardwalks, some of it was just dirt. And now we come to the great theater. <clears throat> Morris the cat is there with us. And again, you can see this was a pretty tall theater seated about 25,000 people. And as we left, here are the sarcophagi. Um, I don't know why that was there at the, the exit, but I don't know if there's a message about that, but that was interesting. Coca-Cola is everywhere in the world. And just another street cafe this time in Turkey, but they've got the food being shown, so you can always point to it. <laughs> and then we love this store. She had to say watches. <laughs> we did not buy a souvenir there. Okay, the one thing about Viking, I don't know if they do this on other cruises, other people taking cruises could tell me, but we were funneled into a rug store. Okay? The guy on the bus, the Turkish guy, says, oh, we're going to take you to a place and give you drinks and a snack. And I think, oh, that's nice. After this whole afternoon of walking around, won't that be delightful? Okay, we get funneled into a rug store. Okay, here's, it was very interesting. I'm not knocking it. Here was the gal uh, demonstrating weaving of the Turkish rug. And a whole bunch of rugs. And for horse lovers, it's going to have horses. And then they would roll out these different rugs to show us the many different styles of colors. And some were like, I think, tribal designs and many different designs. And that's our rug. We fell for it and we bought a rug. <laughs> but we like our rug. You could get rugs in wool or silk, but we got silk because we have cats. And the silk is a tighter weave. And the wool rug we have, when the cats claw it and through it, little, you know, parts, little um, threads, strands of wool come up. So we thought, we don't want to come home with a Turkish rug and have that. So that's a silk rug. If you want to come to my house and touch it and feel it and look at it, you're welcome. Okay. We went off to Rhodes. 
And you can see the weather was pretty good, sunshine in the 60s. Let me flip my page here. So. Okay, that's the entrance to Rhodes, the stag and the doe. And then they had these cool lighthouses. Lighthouses, yeah. Windmills. Windmills. What Close. state am I in? Maine. Maine. Windmills, I'm in Greece. Okay, there's just another view of the windmills and the harbor and the blades. And there was a, a turret of a mosque. Ferry. Oh, a ferry. Of course, they had lots of ferries because you're on an island and Greece has a lot of islands. The Minuet. And then Boston Burger Bar. If you're really hungry for something that sounds more American, I don't, we didn't eat there. I don't know, but I like the sign. Okay, this is a little church in Mount Delermos, the Church of Our Lady, built by the Knights of St. John. And this cross is the cross of the Knights of St. John. And this is the courtyard, the monastery. And then there were these beautiful mosaics of Jesus and this couple of the saints. They had more than this, but we just picked a couple that were pretty. And then this is the inside of the little chapel or church. And then this is the icon of the Church of Our Lady. And then this is the entrance and exit. We walked this way through the monastery and then came back around here. And then they had two overlooks. So this one was a dirt path through these interesting trees. And there's our friend Jenny and us at the first overlook. There's the view we were getting from that overlook. And then there was a paved path to a second overlook with a huge cross. Now you couldn't miss this one. If somebody said, go to the overlook with the cross, it was obvious if you were on the wrong uh, path. Okay, so this is the uh, path and the steps up to the big cross and then the view. And um, this is an airfield here. And then again, just the sea and the town from up there. And then the steps to exit and then a more modern rest facility, the WC, which stands for Water Closet. Thank you. I don't know why that's English. I don't know why that's in Italy and Greece and I, I don't yeah, get it, but maybe it's because the English were traveling there before we Americans. Um, there's peacocks. They had a lot of peacocks for some reason. I don't know why. But if you've never seen a peacock, they are a stunning bird with all their different colors. And then we're going to the Grand Master Palace, which was built by the Knights of St. John. Rhodes prospered from the wealth brought here to Rhodes from the Holy Land by the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem. And so this was, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This building was first a castle and then a royal palace. And this was a very beautiful um, flowering plant we saw on the walk to the uh, palace, and there we're walking, and there's the entrance, very imposing castle, of course, and a panoramic view of the interior. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay, we'll speed up. Uh, just different views, go ahead now. Statues, statues everywhere. Uh, beautiful mosaic floors. Do you want to explain how they got them? Oh, quick explanation. I need the microphone. If you know anything about the mosaics, they're very, very small pieces of pottery. So the question is, how did they, they stole them. This is not original to this building. They actually went out and stole them. So the question was, like a jigsaw puzzle, how did they do that? Well, it was really simple. They laid a material on top of it, gluing the material to the mosaics, then lifted the mosaics up and rolled it like a rug. So when they got to the building, they just unrolled it, glued back to the ground, took the top layer off, and there are the mosaics. Smart. And we just showed you a few of the mosaics. I mean, they had lots, and they were gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Duck. Okay. That's a bird. There's some shots of the interior. That's a uh, lamp from uh, it's Murano glass. They were trying to uh, make this palace refurbish the inside. So Mussolini 
could spend his summers there, but he never made it. Those are the steps leading out of the palace. And this is the uh, outside again. And an interesting restaurant. Souvenir shops. And this was a great little square with the pizza and the pasta and lots of souvenir shops. And then another um, pretty garden type little cafe. And this is a hooded crow. I'm sorry, but we have to show birds once in a while. Okay, Santorini. Um, our ship had to anchor outside of Santorini. I have been to Santorini, so y'all know what I'm talking about. The city is up on the cliff, uh, so the ships have to anchor outside, and that's a Norwegian ship uh, to the right of us. Okay, we're going to Nia Kamini. We're going to climb up the crater because we've been to Santorini before. We did the archaeological site. Um, which was fabulous, but this trip we wanted to go the crater. We took these little sort of pirate looking type boats from um, the pier in Santorini over to Agia uh, Kamini, and there's our uh, guide. It's um, all volcanic, so here we are going up the trail, and we're looking back at the ships, continuing up, up. And then um, just to point out one thing here, these are instruments to measure um, volcanic activity because this is on top of an active underwater volcano. So I'm glad it didn't blow over there. Uh, a fumarole, which is a crack in the earth where the uh, poisonous gases come out. Uh, again, just a view at the top, our guide at the top coming down. Keep going. The ship. We got to go back to the ship. We had lunch, and then we went over. Uh, Santa Marini has these roads that are switchbacks up to the, the city um, because it's very steep, of course. Um, we came back after lunch to the pier and decided we would take the cable cars up to the top. Um, so here we had to climb up, and then the car came down, let the people out. And this is the car going up, up, up. And Santorini is known for the uh, blue roofs of their churches. And of course, <laughs> they let us off so we could walk through the souvenir shops. <laughs> we decided to go back down the steps. How many people have gone down the steps on Santorini? Oh. We've done it twice. We did it the first trip because it was too long a line at the cable car to go down. We didn't want to miss the ship. And we did it this time just because it was so much fun the first time. So we found this line that showed us the port. We thought they had stopped the donkeys to bring people up and down, but the donkeys were still there. Uh, 588 steps, but they're wide steps, and you can stop and rest if they're not hard steps. Wait, go back. There's Noah pointing for the way down. <laughs> Don't want you to miss that. And then there's a view of the steps and the houses on the cliff. And another view, you can see how the houses are all just one after another above it to each other. And this is the donkey doo-doo on the steps. But they're usually wide enough so you can avoid stepping into that. Minefield. And then this is a really great view of how the steps switch back down. And there's our tender down at the very bottom. And this is a swimming pool which we thought was pretty unique on the cliff there. Just another view of a rugged volcanic. And then you got to go through here to the sea and guess what's in there? More souvenir shops. <laughs> and that was the sunset. Okay. We're going now to the Palace of Gnosis. This is on the way. This is a view of the seashore. And this is the entryway into the Palace of Gnosis. Some ruins, the famous columns, the red and black uh, columns of the buildings, uh, frescoes. These are um, not restored, they're the copies of copies. the original. I can't think of the word, copies. The originals, of course, are taken to a museum. Uh, the pots for wine, or not, these aren't wine, these are grain or, or olive oil. Um, they have nice signs in English explaining what you're seeing. 
Uh, this is the throne room. Now over on this side of the throne room, this is on the left side of the throne room as you're facing it. The door's here and you're facing it. That's a cistern. So that was for uh, water or whatever, if they did purification rites, or you know, if they're putting oil or whatever they did on people. Um, this is the throne, it's stone. This is why it's called the stone um, the throne room. But this is a replica in wood. So it's kind of interesting to see how the seat was cut out so it'd be a little more comfortable. And this is the um, fresco on the wall. This is a griffin, which is part lion and part bird. And then these were seats all along the side of the throne room for the uh, people to sit. And more views of different buildings. Keep going. And of course, the bull, the famous bull, you know the story of the monitor where they had to sacrifice, the Greeks had to bring every year eight ladies and eight young men to be sacrificed to the Minotaur. And then Theseus came and killed it. Um, and then they said when we were going through uh, Gnosis that the young people actually did jump over the hoofs or the, the yeah, the hoofs, the horns of the bulls. And they said because the cat the palace was added to so many times, it did become like a labyrinth. So you can see how the myth grew out of something that was real. It's very fascinating. Okay, these are the uh, royal chambers, uh, bed chambers. Go ahead. Beautiful decorations on the wall, an archaeological shop. Sir Arthur Evans from England uh, helped excavate uh, the houses. Lots of um, agriculture in this area, um, vineyards and olive groves. Those are the things. And the ubiquitous souvenir shop. Okay, next we're going to uh, Nacchio, and we're going to Mycenae. But first we stopped at Epidurus to see the great theater. And Epidurus was a spa city. Do you like that? A spa city back in ancient Greece. Wow. Um, here's the great theater. It was huge. So Mary Helen likes to climb steps. So I said, he doesn't have a lot of steps. So I thought, great, I'm going to climb up to here. And you could hear this lady talking to her group from way up there. And she was not yelling. She was just speaking in tone and you so could hear her. Were pretty fascinating. So Mary Helen didn't dare though to go way up to the top because I am a little nervous on heights and these steps don't have a railing. <laughs> so if you slip or fall on the steps, you could see serious damage in our trip went over. But this is just the view that shows you um, the, the people, okay, and what it looks like. And then this, the, the site was gorgeous with the mountains. And there's a, a traveler resting in the higher uh, level, high class seats. Okay, now next, we're going to the Acropolis at Mycenae, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site again. And these are shaft graves. This is a round one. And this is a, a picture of what they looked like when they were done. And uh, Heinrich Schillman, I think that's his name, um, he helped excavate Mycenae um, and found gold um, objects in the burial chambers under Grave Circle A. And again, as I say, handy signs in English. Uh, okay, we're going up into the Acropolis. This is the famous Lion Gate. Better shot. Keep going. The lions, unfortunately, are headless, <laughs> but those are the lion bodies. So this is a very famous site at Messini, uh, which was a very uh, rich and important city 3,000 years ago. And you can see the size of these huge, huge stones that are lining uh, the corridor go up into the uh, citadel. And now we're inside the citadel or the Acropolis, and again, a lot of stones. And we're going up the path here, the switchbacks, you can see some people up on the top. And again, the view is spectacular, a lot of olive trees. This, these are the buses down here, so you can see how high up we were. And this is one of the paths. 
And then at the same site is the treasury of Atreus or Agamemnon's tomb. It's the famous beehive tomb. It's shaped as a beehive. And, and here's me standing by the main door. This is a huge, doesn't look that big when you're first going down the corridor to it, but it's huge when you get there. There's nothing attaching those stones. They're one on top of the other. They're free standing. They're and enormous. this little stone it's is 120 tons. When you look up and see the size of that stone, it's just amazing. Okay, this is the inside. And this is looking up to the roof. Now, the reason it's got the dark stuff on it is because shepherds came in there with their sheep in the cold weather and built fire, so you get all that carbon stuff. Um, this is the side burial, bur burial chamber. This is just looking from the other side out towards the uh, exit, entrance exit. And then the last thing we saw was the Palamidi Fortress, which was built by the Venetians. It was supposed to be um, a masterpiece of military architecture. However, it was successfully stormed in one night by Greek troops in 1822. Without a shot being fired. The Turkish garrison within to surrender without a fight. <laughs> so these get a lot of stonework. Everybody has to have their picture taken under the little bell and just some views of the, the turret inside. Quite a massive structure and of course, beautiful views from the top. And that's the end of our adventure on Greek Odyssey. Just to point out something about the safety, I know some people are still have trepidation about traveling. We never felt safer in, in any place than Greece. You couldn't go into a shop or a restaurant without showing COVID card. They only allow a number of people in like uh, museums. They only allow certain people in museums. Uh, so we felt extremely safe. They tested us every morning. Uh, every time we went to eat, they checked our temperature. We had to wash our hands uh, in front of them. Uh, everyone wore masks, and the people in the cities were extremely careful. Everyone wore masks, so they were very, very safe, and we felt very comfortable. When we came back, we weren't so safe and comfortable. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of difference in the United States and there in Greece, but they really were good. And we were at the very end of the, the tour. In other words, November is the end of the tourist season. We took the last Delta flight out of Greece for that season. That was the end of the season. That was a great time to go. We had a wonderful time there. Thanks, Noah. Thank you, Mary Helen. I saw a lot of things I missed when I went to Greece, so maybe we'll have to go back. Uh, if anybody doesn't have the raffle ticket, while you're Well, she's giving out the tickets. Uh, if anybody missed it in the frequent flyer, uh, we are in need of somebody to do our new newsletter. When I say newsletter, I don't mean put any content in it. If you're good at cutting and pasting and can use uh, word publishing, uh, this would be a job to take five, six hours a month instead of just publishing. Okay, we got everybody. Uh, you're awesome. First one. Oh, I just opened it.
the Zoom people lost their their audio, so I'm bringing my computer up. So. Okay. Um, Going twice size for Chuck. Oh. Oh. Okay, thanks. Okay. Two, 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 five, three, six. Sherry. Okay. Sherry, yeah. this is, uh, we still can't hear. So can you do us the favor of either saying it or typing it in the chat who the winners are? Because we cannot hear. Um, yes, I will do that. Thank you. Okay, we got another Zoom. What is it? You know, she was on. Shelby Weiss, are you still there? Okay. Um, yes, it looks like it. Shelly, I think so, Ed. Ed, I believe she is. Shelly is here. Okay, Shelly, what was it? I think it's Shelly. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's her. Okay, Shelly, what was your favorite one as well? Okay, the last drawing is in the room. Okay. Okay, Shelly, they will bring your prize by your home. Okay, well, that's it for the board prizes. Shelly, will you be at home for a bit? Yes. Oh. 
Yes, I, I didn't look um, in the middle of the presentation, but the most I saw logged on here was 19. So, but that could be, well, but that could be couples. Okay, some of them, I'm sure were. Some of them were singles, but some are, some were couples, I guess. Yeah, so let me end it for everybody.